Please has pens picked up so much. It's okay. Here. Back. But the mohawk is still there. I've just like brushed this down and, and it's there, I promise. And you said goodbye to the dreads? A long time ago. I was just. bored. Oh. There's only so much color you can color dreads <laughs> before your hair starts complaining. So I got bored. It's time to go. What is it that I like about whiskey? Um, <clears throat> Just the range of flavors that go with it. Uh, I think a good whiskey. It literally is just a whole range of flavors, you know, um, from dark, smoky, depending on what you like or what you seek in your whiskey. Um, and it's smooth, it's warming, it's comforting, it's great in the winter. And I think it's just the kind of drink you can sit alone and engenders towards thinking and thought and contemplation. It's a great drink to sit and think with, really. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> what would you do if you found out your partner is cheating on you? I would have a conversation about it. I'm not big on <laughs> running out on a relationship because I'm being cheated on, because men tend to cheat. So, knowing that. I just have the conversation. I find out where my place in it is. Are you cheating because you're no longer in love with me? Or are you cheating because you just needed to get that off your chest? If it was just a thing of my partner getting it off his chest, I would be fine with moving on with the relationship. Well, let me start with the last one first. When I come ship in a quagga now home, so then the But um is there really a difference between someone who cheated and a cheater? Because I feel as if once you've crossed that line, then you're already labeled as such. And so a cheater, as we know it, will continue cheating. But a person who cheated apparently has only done it once, but it does not stop them from doing it again. And so that's why I feel as if there's really no difference between the two. Once you've crossed that line, you've crossed that line. Don't try and label yourself as less of a cheater or more of a cheater. It's the same thing. I do not have sexual relations <laughs> with anyone. What are your thoughts on consent in a sexual context? Without consent, there can be no sexual <laughs> um, content. I feel like we downplay consent and we kind of misconstrue what it is and how it's communicated many people feel like in a content of, of of a girl if she's acting in a suggestive way that's consent but she hasn't told you yes or no using you know communication that adults do which is words and men will take that and go and be like but see you you were acting like you wanted it. You get what I mean? And that's not consent. If she hasn't told you, yes, let's do this, then you should not do it. And if she's told you no, then you stop. And if you continue past that, it becomes non-consensual. If she's saying no, giggling about it, or if it's not strongly said, it's still no at the end of the day, so don't do it. However, I think that comes from women have for the longest time not been allowed to own their bodies and when you're a teenager it's more about like for girls girls shouldn't talk about sex girls shouldn't um, explore anything about sex I'm not saying go out and have sex or read up on sex or whatever that's something that is wrong or taboo or you look sleazy and, 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 and easy if you do talk about sex if you know about sex if you're aware about you know your body and sex as a teenager as a teenage girl but for the teenage boy it's almost normal for them to talk about sex and to own 
sexual experience to own sexual knowledge right and then when you get into your 20s it's more about sour you might be having sex but it's more for him right it's not something that women own you're not in ownership of your bodies and by the time you're getting to the point where you're getting married we have all these crazy bridal showers which are just crap where older women will tell you like they'll tell you you know just it's something that happens it doesn't take a long time just give it to him be happy have wine or whatever you need to get through it but you know it's not it's never been presented as something that a woman should own or in bed a woman should know this is what i like this is what i don't like or in bed a woman should voice that i don't like what you're doing or abcd you know it's something that you're doing for him so even the women who want to say no midway or before feel like they can't because it's been presented as your body is not yours it's for his pleasure and i think that's where the when a woman says no she means yes because even for the men they've grown up from that teenage boy to now when they're married to being taught that these these are things that women should give you. This is something that is expected of a woman. This is her duty. And this is your right as a man. So if she says no, it's just like, really though? Like, do you not go for your bridal shower? Or <laughs> what do you know? So it's so sad that we haven't been allowed to own our bodies. And that's where the problem lies on both ends. Even if you do say no, the guy won't take it as no. And even if you want to say no, you won't say no because it's not something that you have been taught that it's okay to say. Yeah. Whether at the beginning or in the middle. Whether at the beginning or in the middle. Because, and I was saying it in two instances, right? Um, the first one being for a woman, let's say your first sexual experience is not, you're scared, you've had random myths about it, maybe you're doing it at a point where your parents are not comfortable and they don't know, so there's also that pressure at the same time. So midway, you might be like, no, 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 I don't want to do this. So you want to tell me at that point, the man will be like, well, we started, so we continue. This was like the, the best way to communicate this to men when it comes to consent. If you are being given head, right? And it's uncomfortable. If she's biting, if she's... If it's pain, it's not going to be painful, I should hope. <laughs> but if she's, if she's, if, if it's painful, then for you to say stop, she also has to respect that and stop. You've withdrawn your consent. And if she continues from that step, or from that point onwards, it's non-consensual. So I don't know why we are scared to own the power of our consent and the power of our bodies and to just own it and be able to say, no, nah, I'm really not feeling this actually, so... Just watch a movie. You know, <laughs> you have that right. Yeah. I feel like in media, just because we have we have a greater influence, you know, we turn we have this mic in front of us that makes us talk to the whole of Kenya. We have streaming services online which makes us talk to the whole world. Yeah. And it would be very irresponsible of us to and it has been very irresponsible of some of us to propagate and create an environment where rape culture thrives. Because when you're fighting rape, one of the problems is changing our mindsets. There's a lot of cultural aspects that create an environment that's good for rape. And while you're fighting it on the ground, you also have to fight it mentally. And in media, we are better placed rather than coming out and saying, oh, you know, one girl got raped or 10 girls got raped or 10 boys got raped whatever rather than only relaying the facts we do have a duty to use our influence which is bigger than the next person to kind of get us thinking again critically about what we think is true yeah and so i think it would be very irresponsible of us to engage in laughing about rape culture because there are people looking up to us. As cliche as that sounds, there are people looking up to us, there are people listening to us, there are people watching us from across the world. So if we can do our part to get 
people thinking and questioning things that help rip culture thrive, that's very important for us to do, I think. <laughs> Hi, I'm Adele Onyango, and honestly, consent is very important. It's yours, own that power to say no, and guess what? No actually means no. Yeah. Rape culture and consent. Consent is a really difficult thing to frame, I think, because to a large extent it is. In the non-clear-cut cases, it's a really difficult thing to frame because to some extent it is subjective. You can only be in the situation and even within that, a lot is attributable to different persons' perspectives. And I think, you know, starting off the discussion with the term rape culture is not very positive. I don't think we have a rape culture per se. I think of people who assault other people because, you know, rape happens to both men and women. Um, you know, statistics show that there is an increase in sexual violence against men and there is actually a large proportion unaccounted for because of the stigma attached to it. Um, I think we should more be thinking of it as trying to change the attitudes that we have towards different genders. Um, in terms of having respect, not just for your partner, whatever sex they are, but also respect for yourself. And I think once you overcome that hump, it changes what you want to do and what you expect from the interactions you have with, with opposite genders or opposite sexes, depending on, yeah, which word you want to use. My thoughts on rape culture and consent. I think one, it's a big question, is rape a culture? That's, that would be a new term for me. Um, I think if there's no consent, then it is rape. I think that there's different levels of rape. So, you know, there's situations where someone says no, but they really mean yes. <laughs> and I know that's kind of radical. And so maybe that might not be rape if it goes on and they're with it, but then I feel like if they say no and they continue to say it and they continue to go along those lines, then it needs to be respected. Otherwise, we're talking about rape now. And so I, I'm not cool with rape. I think it's wrong. And I think anyone would agree with me on that. And there's also like date rape where, you know, the lines are a lot more blurry. And they say that every eight seconds a woman is raped, but a lot of people don't talk about the men who are being raped. And she says no, and she continues to say no. I mean, I, I, okay, so it would require a little bit of acting. <laughs> so it would be, there's this scenario where it's like, no, no, ah, yes, yes, right? <laughs> so that one is like, let's keep going. Then there's the, no, no, I'm serious, no, stop. That's the one where we're talking about, okay, it's time to stop and respect those wishes. With respect to consent, I remember when um, I first joined college um, and then they actually had us have a whole um, talk or seminar in which you were told to actually ask. Like you know the way you just, usually you just get into the groove of things and you know, oh, it's a, yeah, there's no there's no one who's giving you force or whatever. So. This one, they add you, they sat you down, and you have to ask for a kiss. You have to ask for sex, and I found that an interesting way of thinking about it because if you work by assumptions, they're really hard. How do you know? But then, let's stick to assumptions for now. But um, that's in terms of consent. Rape culture is it's not frowned upon as much as it should be, unfortunately, and. I'll say that because, one, the places where it's considered, okay, if you go back to the times when you used to do wife snatching, that was a thing and it was accepted. She didn't have to consent to the issue. So, in the same way, some of those things keep on playing forward, and so then you find um, there's this whole um, school of thought these days where no means yes. No in the dictionary it means no. So therefore, in life, no means no. So there should not be um, irresponsible posting of posts of any rape. 
even from a police report. A police report should not come out to the public. That should be between her and herself. And, um, and the person in question that she's trying to um, get, help, get help from, be it um, a professional or a cop, whatever it is. So that's my thought.